Hi everyone. In this session we're going to be having a look at the brush in a little bit more detail as well as a few paint mode controls and the colour pots and palettes that you use to mix your colours as well as store your colours when working inside the paint module. So to start off let's have a look at the brush. To the right of the interface you can see that you've got all the different types of brushes that are inside of paint. This is a scrollable menu which allows you to actually access all those brushes and you've got a variety of patterns that you can choose from. So for example if I was to take the first brush and simply just paint on the screen you can see that this is a simple soft edge brush. One of the previous requests in the blog itself was that someone asked how do we make a soft edge brush give it a hard edge. So the way we can do this is by accessing the properties of the brush. To access the properties of the brush we want to use simply double click on the brush and it will bring up the brush menu. If you do not see this menu first all you need to do is swipe down. There is a swipe down menu which is located at the bottom of the interface and this allows me to access the brush properties once I've double clicked on the brush. In order for me to go ahead and start changing the way the brush behaves we can simply adjust it using this gradient curve. You can see at the moment the curve goes from the one end to the other. This means that the brush is giving me a nice soft edge effect. If I want to harden the brush this is like working with a histogram where we would simply crush the black and the whites inside the brush and you can see it's now given me a hard edged shape. This will not apply itself to the current brush that is selected until I decide to either update the brush or simply create a new brush. This means you can have various different brushes stored with various different settings inside of the brush palette and you can then click and choose them as you need them. So once you've updated or created a new brush I can simply go ahead and paint on my image and you can see how I've now got a hard edged brush shape. One of the other things that this gradient panel gives you is if I was just to reset the curve and start adding control points in you can see that this will allow me to really control the way the area is being applied in terms of gradient. So you can see how I've now created a really different type of looking brush. If I update this and I now start painting with this brush on my screen you can see that we've created a completely different pattern and you've now gathered that this black and white image almost acts like an alpha channel where the white is solid and the black is transparent. This allows you to really control what parts of the brush are soft, what parts of the brush are transparent. So you've got really good fine control in the way that this detail can actually be used. Some of the other things that you've got here is you can actually go ahead and take this particular brush that we've created and we can blur it out. So you can see by blurring it out it gives it a much more softer edge in this particular case. If I update that onto my brush and once again by painting onto my scene you can see the brush is now slightly softer. You can go ahead and tweak and change it as much as you like. Now the default setting of this curve is obviously a circular brush. If I wanted to give my own pattern it can very easily be done by just creating something in the paint module and making a copy of it. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say for example I've just got a nice clean black frame here and what I'd like to go ahead and do is just using maybe a regular brush or you could even bring in a pattern if you wish. In this case we'll just go ahead and create something. So let's say I just create this little twirly whirly pattern we have here. Now let's say I want to make this twirly whirly section into a brush. What you can do simply is simply use the grab command. The grab command allows you to take a sample of the image and if I release you can now see how that sample has now become a potential brush. If I was then to go ahead and let's say we were to apply it onto the brush we have here. So if I update that the update option now becomes my new brush and when I start painting with it you can see how we've now created a completely unique brush based on the properties that I've applied to it in here. This brush could be inverted as well so if I wanted to invert using a square brush I get a different result from this if we were to update it. You can see that it gives us a different type of uh, you know, effect on this but typically this is the type of way you would be looking at the brush itself. One other little thing you can do is you can simply take any other brush that you choose for example. Let's say we take the original brush that we had we can make the size a lot smaller and then we can go ahead and also draw on the brush pattern as well. If we were to then take that brush pattern and simply once again I'll go ahead and choose my image here and update it. It will then update it with my new brush and as I said before if I go and paint it will then paint with my new pattern. So you can simply customize the brush either from grabbing directly off the screen or you can paint inside the little brush window here to create your unique customized brush. Now once you've got this brush created and let's say you need to use it again and again you can simply take this brush and you can save it either through the load and save options here to save only the brush. 
So you can see this will save a particular user brush or alternatively if you go to the main load and save menu you can either save it as a brush set which means it'll save all the brushes in the set of brushes or you can save individual brushes which you saw in the first menu. So there's two ways in which you can save your particular brush settings that you have. Now let's go ahead and have a look at some of the other functions that you've got. Next up we have the paint mode. The paint mode basically allows you to control the way the brushes are being applied with the different options. So for example what you first got is you've got paint. This is obviously your default standard method. It leads very little explanation but you just pretty much paint a paint stroke onto your image. The next options you've got there are clone and reveal. I will be doing a separate blog on clone and reveal because you can go into quite a bit of detail to use it for either cleaning up an image, removing wires and you can integrate this with auto paint and tracking so it's quite a detailed section. The next thing we've got here which is the third option is the filtering tools. The filtering tools basically allow you to apply pixel values onto your image. So what this means is if I open up this browser you can see that we've got a whole bunch of different filters we can apply. So you've got things like negative newsprint operations, things like spooky and what these do is these basically just apply different pixel values based on the value that we're painting on. So you can see what the spooky filter does is it uses the luminance in the picture to create an outline look if this is a particular result that you want to achieve. Other options you've got here are then the customized brushes. The customized paint modes, they allow you to do certain things. For example, the first mode here is the wash mode and this simply allows you to apply a color wash on side the screen. Other options you've got here are things like shading. The shading is pretty much like a brightening or darkening tool. So depending on the color that I use to do my shading with, this will either make the image darker or brighter. Next option you've got here is the smearing tool and the smearing tool basically allows you to take the image and smear it on the screen which is really good for mixing colors. You can also use this option to do for example dragging. So if I just make the brush a little bit bigger you can see how I can take those pixels and then just drag them along. So it picks the pixels up, moves them and creates a smearing effect behind it which could be very useful for certain things. Secondly you've then got the warping option. The warping option allows you to literally pick up parts of the image based on the size of the brush and physically warp the pixels around the image. The next option is your impressionist brush. This will take the pixel colors underneath it and literally mash them together to create a really interesting type of color effect. Next one you've got is recursive clone and recursive clone ties into the clone and reveal option but simply what recursive clone allows you to do is it recursively clones your image. So for example if I was just to use control to choose a source area to clone from and then I click to create a clone offset when I start painting you can see how it's recursively cloning what I've just done. This is one of the differences which I'll be explaining when we have a look at cloning and revealing in a little bit more detail. You then have got the stamp option. The stamp option allows you to literally pick up a pattern from an image and create a stamping mechanism from this. This is different to defining a brush. Defining a brush is based on black and white values whereas when you use a stamp, so if I hold down control and I click, you can see that the size of the brush sampled the image which is now inside the screen. So if I was now to go ahead and start doing little paint brushes you can see how very quickly I've sampled a pixel pattern and that particular pixel pattern is then being used to create my particular brush. Lastly you've then got the blur tool and the blur tool allows you to choose the type of blur you're using and the strength of that blur. So for example if we just use the heavier Gaussian blur and I blur this out you can see very quickly I can blur things based on wherever I'm dragging my brush on the screen. So this is a very brief summary of how the paint mode tools work and uh, I'm sure just by playing around with them you can create your own particular settings. The last thing you'll notice about the paint mode is you've got this option here to edit and then you've got one, two, three, four, five. These are paint modes that you can set. So for example if one particular situation I may be painting with a particular type of color, I want a specific type of brush size, this will be edited onto paint mode number one. So if I paint on the screen here you can see that's the result I'm getting. If I then switch to number two and let's say for example we switch to a wash mode with a slightly different color, different brush perhaps, we can then save this as brush mode number two. Now while edit is turned on it is customizing the values of the brush into value number two. When I turn edit off it's now been locked into this. So if I was to go ahead and paint with brush number two you can see the result we're getting. If I move between brushes one and two in the paint mode you can see how it will automatically switch the colors. Now because you've got five you can have up to five different brush settings available to you which you can customize. They're also mapped to the numerical values one two three four five on the keyboard respectively. 
So you can very quickly have a whole bunch of brushes at your fingertips that you can switch in between as you're busy working. And that's one of the really nice things about being able to customize the actual paint mode itself. Finally, we've got the color pot and the color palette. Let's go ahead and have a look at where these tools are. So when you come into Paint, you'll notice under Brush Attributes, you've got that swipe down menu. Now that swipe down menu you originally saw for the brush properties. But by default, when you swipe down, it gives you the pot menu or it gives you the palette menu. One thing to point out, and this does catch a lot of people out, is if you are working on a customizable brush, when you have the brush selected, the properties of that brush will be the only thing that is accessible through the swipe down menu. If I wanted to get back to the pot or the palette tools, you simply click on this again and it will bring up the pot tool or the palette tool depending whichever one you had selected previously. This is something that catches a lot of people out and it's just worth knowing. The pot menu gives you all the colors that you have available in your color scheme that you're using. If I wanted to customize and create my own color, very simply you can come to the color options under the brush, you can pick a color or you can mix a color depending on how you adjust the sliders. So if I wanted to use this particular color and apply it into my pot menu, we'd simply go ahead, hover over an existing color, you click and hold down, and eventually that color gets applied into the pot, into the color scheme that you have. With this particular pot, you can actually save this color scheme to be reused on campaigns. So just by accessing the save menu and choosing the color palette, this will then save the actual colors that you're using inside of the color scheme itself and then you're able to reload them as and when you need them. The other option here is you've then got the actual palette. The color palette allows you to go ahead and mix colors together to create a specific type of color you may need. So this is all defined on the type of brush you use. So if I select a regular circle brush for example and we were to go ahead and add a color into the scene you can see it adds the color in for me. If I then choose another color we can then just paint one color on top of another to create the base colors that uh, I might potentially want to be mixing from. In order for me to mix the colors together, we need to use the paint mode tools and use a medium known as smearing to go ahead and do the mix for me. The one thing you need to know is in order for the actual paint mode medium to be applied, you need to hold the M button down on the keyboard. This will allow you to physically take those colors and mix them together. If you do not hold the M button down on the keyboard, it will simply just paint the color like it does using the paint mode. Now if I want to sample the color inside here, I switch back to the paint mode, I hold the control hotkey down, and when I drag the cursor along the actual mix of the palette, you can then see it's now sampling the pixel value wherever the cursor is falling. So for example, if this is my new color that I'd like to keep, I can come back to the pop menu, and then if we click and hold down again, this will now apply the new color that I've created, as well as also allowing me to go ahead and paint that color directly onto my image.